Hey friends, what's up? If you aren't familiar, I made this presentational framework and emotion with Svelte so you can record awesome presentations or make educational content for YouTube. That totally depends on you, right? But there's been one missing feature and that is the ability to record and export videos. So today we're going to implement that using the browser media recorder API. So as you can see here, we can use this shortcut so we can start the recording. It's going to ask us for permission so you can full screen your presentation if you want. I'm going to say allow and now after three seconds it's going to start recording. So now you can record your presentation and when you're done, you can save the video. So now it's going to ask you to save it and now you can do whatever you want. So you can open it in your video player, put it in your editor or whatever else you want. How beautiful is this friends? Alright, but before you get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and you can also support me by becoming a patron. Alright friends, so there are two parts to this. And this is one of those situations where this is really hard to grok on MDN because the information is in 10 different places. So the first part is we're going to use this API, get display media. So if you look at this example, let me just scroll down. So we can say navigator media devices get display media. And now we're going to get the capture stream. So now we need to do something with the stream, which is where the second part comes in, in which is using the media stream recording API. So we're going to take that stream and then we're going to record whatever we have. So we can say new media recorder, we're going to pass it the stream options and now we can record it and we can download the video. And all of these links are going to be in the description if you're curious. So here is the problem sometimes with MDN, right? You have all of these API references, which is really dry. And then you have these guides, which shows you how to do this in one go. So this is really an entire tutorial on this. So you can also go through this if you want. But yeah, I'm excited to get started. So first thing we're going to do. So I'm inside of an Emotion project. And if you want to follow along, you can just create an empty Svelkit project or Svelte project. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be Svelte, right? Because it's just a browser API. So we're going to go here and I'm going to go to source lib here i have these components and i'm going to create a new component i'm going to say recorder svelte and now i'm going to open index here and now i just need to export so it's going to be a new one i'm going to say import recorder from recorder svelte and now i'm going to export it here so now i'm going to say recorder so now i can import it inside my library and now if i go here in our slide so this is going to be available from here so I can say recorder and then I can use this in my site so I can say recorder and let me just remove this let's do this and let's just see if it works recorder I can save this let's go here and we can see it's here because the text is dark right but I'm going to do something else I'm going to copy and paste some of the markup and styles because it's really not important I want to focus on what's important right so here are just some styles you're going to see in a second what they are so here is a recorder i'm just going to position it absolutely and then i have some styles to make it look nicer right but it's really not important and here i have this piece of markup for the state you're going to need so here i have these details so i can collapse this pane right so i'm going to use a video here for example to see the output right and then i have these buttons for starting and stopping the recording and here i also want to output the settings so we can understand it better right and that's basically it and this is also really a neat trick if you ever have problems with ESLint yelling about something that you really don't care about. You can really use this Svelte ignore and then you can use this ignore rule here. But yeah, basically that's it. So now I can use a script tag here and then let's define some things. So first we're going to need to keep track of the media stream. You can name this whatever you want. I'm going to name it media stream. And this is of type media stream. But of course TypeScript is optional. If you're not using TypeScript, ignore it. And now I can say settings. So the settings we're going to output are going to be media track settings this is also optional and then we need a reference to the video element so i'm going to say html video element and that's basically it and now we're also going to need some functions we're going to say function record and we're going to need function stop all right let me see so that's it and now i can save this and everything should work great now there are no errors we can see here is just this video here are buttons and that's basically it Alright friends, so let's first start by asking the user for permission. We need their consent to record the tab or whatever else you want, right? So we can turn this into an async function. So we're going to reassign media stream and then we're going to use the navigator browser API. So we can say navigator media devices. And now when you say get, you can say get user media so you can get their webcam or whatever else you want. But I'm going to say get display media and you can pass in some options here. So by default, 
video is set to true audio is set to false but in this case i also want to record audio so i'm going to say true and if i save this let's go here and then i'm going to press record so now you're going to get s for permission as you can see you can record the tab window or the entire screen but in this case i just want the tab but there's one problem my current tab isn't listed here and i don't understand why they do this by default and this is something that's so confusing unless you thoroughly read the docs because if you go here to the get display media right that's what you're using and then you scroll down here and you read all of this junk right and typescript can't even help you here because the types don't exist yet so as you can see here we have these two interesting things so we have self browser surface so if you enable this then you're going to get an option for the current tab or you can use prefer current tab to only use the current tab so this is only something that you can know if you thoroughly read the docs but yeah let's see how this works so when i go to our code here i'm going to say self browser surface which sounds confusing in itself right so you can see here we get the warning because there aren't even types for this so we can say ts ignore and let me see what's up with this okay we can just save this and now if i go here and let me just record and you can see our tab is now going to be one of the options but in this case let me just use prefer current tab because that's what i want but your use case might be different right so i'm going to say prefer current tab to be true so it's always going to record this tab and nothing else so if i press record now we're going to get asked for permission as you can see audio works and we can record this tab so there are some other options here so you can go here to the video and you can specify an object if you want so you can pass if something like width and height but this isn't going to change the browser resolution this is just going to change the container size after you're done recording so if you want to do this you can also specify this but another thing that I really want is frame rate. So I think this is default 30 FPS per second, but I want the smooth buttery video. So I'm going to say 60 FPS. All right, that's really cool. So let's output this stream somewhere. And that is why I created this video element so we can see what we're looking at. All right, cool. So now I can reference the video element and we can change source object to be the stream. So we can say media stream. And now we should be able to see here. Let's see, media recorder let's record and you can see here we get this hall of mirrors effect and that's probably why they hide it by default but again it's so confusing right and you might be used to seeing something like this if you ever used obs for recording but yeah that's basically it and now let's also output the settings so now we can reassign the settings so we're going to get an object and we can output the settings what it uses by default all right so now you can say settings and now we can say media stream and we can also get the video tracks but we just want to Take the first one to see the settings right and then we can use this api get settings and actually we need to invoke this as a function and now we can get the settings so this is going to reassign the settings to our settings value which is going to be output here in this pre tag so we're going to stringify just so we can see the options more clearly so if i save this and i go here let's start recording so we can see what the settings are by default awesome so now we can see here you have the stream and we can see the aspect ratio and there's some other weird things about this api for example you can pass in a cursor option so you can hide your mouse cursor but this actually just straight up doesn't work i don't know why but right now it doesn't work so you can't really use this and then you have some other things like the display surface so this is what you've seen before the option to record your window tab or your full screen you can see here is the frame rate we set it to 60 fps and then you have these other options like width and height so let me just stop sharing and now we're actually going to use the media recorder so this is the first part you want to get the stream and then you want to do something with the stream right so let's actually instantiate it so we can say const media recorder so we're going to use the media recorder api as you can see what options does it want it wants a stream of type media stream hmm, how convenient we already have that so let's just pass it media stream and that's it you can also pass some other options you can pass the audio bits per second, bits per second, the MIME type. By default, you can only record WebM. Unfortunately, you can't record MP4s. But yeah, just so you know, you have these options. And then we're also going to add an event listener so we can do something with the data. So how can we do that? Well, we're going to add an event listener. So we're going to use this data available. So this usually happens when you stop recording. So we're going to get this raw buffer or video chunks, which you can do whatever you want with. So I'm going to say event. All right, so now we have to create something that the browser can understand. So let me just console log this out. So we're going to use the URL from the browser. 
we're going to create an object URL and now we're going to pass event data right here. And to stop everything, we can just go here to a stop function and we can say media stream because we have a reference to it. And now we first need to get all of the tracks. So if you're wondering what are the tracks and how you have multiple tracks, the reason you have multiple tracks is because you have the video and audio. So already those are two tracks. So you can say for each track, you can say track stop. And we can also console log this out so you see what I'm talking about. And then I'm just going to say, let's see, console log, media stream get tracks. All right, so let's just open the console here. Let me clear everything. So when I go here and I press record, you can see here we have two media tracks. So you have your media stream track, which is audio and the browser capture. And this is why you have multiple of these and why you have to clean them up. All right, but what happens now if you press stop? So now they're going to get cleared and that's basically it. Now we don't have a stream anymore. And the reason we didn't log out this, let me just remove this, because actually you have to start the recording somehow. So you have to say media recorder start. Cool. So now we can go here and let's start the recording allow and let's stop it and we can see we get this blob so blob buffers and etc are just the rawest type of data available so now we can do whatever we want with this we can download this as a video right or whatever else you want but in this case i just want to assign it to the video so we can see what we have after we're done recording all right so i'm going to close this and this is actually very simple i'm going to keep this but instead of logging out i'm just going to reassign it to the video element so we can say source equals to this blob, right? And that's basically all you have to do. And we can also console log this event data, right? So you can see what it is, event data. And let me just comment this out because we're just going to output the recorded stream, right? Cool, so let me save this. And now when I open the recorder, let me just also open the developer tools. So now we can start recording. And now I can do something inside of my presentation. But as you can see, now when we press stop, this is going to update the stream. So now this is our actual recording. So you can see I can scrub through this and it looks really lovely. And if I show this in the code here, this is how I set it up. So I have to say controls here to get the controls and autoplay right by default. So this is really simple. So now basically we have this recording here. We can scrub through it and it's beautiful. And as you can see, here is the blob that we output. So this is what you get from the event. So now it's of type video web M and it uses this codec VP8 by default and opus for the audio, I think. And that's basically it to the media recorder API. But yeah, as you can see, this is it. Let me just also refresh for good measure. And now we can open the recorder. We can ask for permission and we can immediately start recording. So now if I collapse this, let's just record this. And once you're done, you can just stop the recording. So we can go to the recorder. We can say stop. And now we can see here is our entire video. The same thing that we recorded. So let me just full screen this so we can see this buttery smooth 60 frames per second. How beautiful is this, friends? All right, friends. So now that we understand the basics, it's going to be a lot easier when I show you how I made the recorder. So we can go to our code here. I'm going to delete everything since we don't need this code. Now you can see there is nothing left. So we can start from scratch. First, I'm going to create a script tag and now I'm going to define some types. If you're not using TypeScript, this is optional. But first, I'm going to use explicit state instead of booleans. This makes it really easy to reason about your state. So I'm going to say ready. Then I'm going to define another one. I'm going to say ready countdown. So when the countdown starts, right? And then we're also going to have the recording state. And you can also put other intermediary states here. You can, for example, have canceled. So maybe you can have a shortcut when the user cancels it and then you can do something based on that this is why this is really awesome because you always know what state you're in and what to do so this is easy to extend and you don't have to use a state machine you can just do this all right how cool is this so let me just create this optional type here and i'm being fancy here you actually don't have to do this Optional. i'm going to pass it a generic so this is going to be t or undefined and you're going to see why this is useful so now i want to create four props. I'm going to create width, height, audio, and the frame rate. So I can say export let width. And here is why I made this type. So I can say optional. So I can pass it what type this is. So I don't have to do this. I don't have to say number 
I can type it like this. I can just use this utility that I created. So I can say optional number and it is going to return the same thing, right? So now I can say by default undefined because I wanted to use the default, right? So if the user doesn't pass width or they don't pass height, just use whatever the default is. I'm going to copy this over and now I'm going to say height. Again, this is going to be of type number, which is again optional. And then I'm going to say export let audio and I'm going to set the default to true because I want to capture audio and video. And let's also do another one for the frame rate. So we can say export let frame rate. And now we can set it to 60 FPS. All right, cool. So now let's define the state of our app. So we can say let state and we can pass the state type. And now we have great auto completion. So now we can say by default, this is ready. So this is waiting for us to start the recorder. And then we're also going to need a recorder. So this is going to be of type media recorder. And then we're also going to have the stream. So we can say media stream. So we're going to see later what this is, but for right now, I'm going to say video chunks. So here we're going to save all of these video chunks. This is going to be an array, but this is going to be of type blob. So this is an array of blobs. So this is the raw data. And then we're going to have a timer. So we're going to have keep track of it so we can clean it up. We can say timer interval, which is going to be of type uh, Node.js, I think, and it's timeout. Cool. And then we can set the timer to be free, but you can increase it. So this is really flexible. Cool, that's basically it for our exports and our state. And now we can save the file and continue. All right, so let's create the markup next. Let me just make space here. And here I'm going to show you something awesome. So we can say, for example, how we define this state here. So we can say if state ready or state ready countdown. So we want to show this recorder in these scenarios, right? So again, as I told you before, this is much easier to reason about. Okay, but this is kind of verbose to type. So you're going to see why I named it this way. So we can do something like this. We can say if state includes ready, boom, bam. And this is actually something that inspired me from xState because xState has something similar to this. It has matches or some other method like that. So yeah, we can make this a lot shorter. Cool. So now let's make a recorder div. And what's really awesome about this, let me show you another thing. When you have state like this, you can use data attributes to style things and do animations. So you can say data state, and now you can pass it a state. How cool is that, right? So now you can just use this CSS selector and you can style anything you want. So of course, we're going to need a button inside. And this button is going to have a class record and is going to have an on click event listener. So we're going to say prepare recording, same as we done before. And now we can also include some other things inside of here. We can say circle. And now I can say if, and only show this if state is in ready countdown state. And this is how simple it is to reason about state when you do it like this. Boom. And now you can just output the timer. Cool. So let me just create this function so we don't get this error. Function prepare recording. And let's just see what we have if I save this. And another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to copy over these styles since styles isn't something that I want to focus on, but I'm going to share some cool things with you. So for example, when we create this recorder here, you can also treat your CSS as components. So again, we can define these variables inside of here. So I'm going to just position this button absolutely. And then as you can see, here's where our state comes into place. So you can style things based on your data attributes. Now we can say ready countdown, and then we can style things based on this state, right? How beautiful is this? So we can just override CSS variables instead of overriding properties. Another example of this is inside of this circle where I'm hovering. I don't need to override the background property. I can just override the CSS variable. And there's really not a lot of CSS, nothing special, just some basic stylings. But yeah, now that we save it, we can see we have this button. And now when we inspect it, we can also see something else that's awesome. So you can see here the circle record and we can see data state. So now this is a really awesome way to do whatever you need in your app, right? But yeah, let's actually finish this and let's just provide the hints or the information. So this is after the button. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to create info. And again, we can use our state if state is ready, but you can do whatever else you want. So I'm going to create a uh, p tag shortcut and I'm going to say shift plus r 
And then let me just copy this over. And I'm going to say description. And I'm going to say to start recording. And let me just go here. I'm going to copy over this block. And I want to show another tip when the countdown is going so the user can see, okay, this is how I stop this. But of course, I'm also going to have documentation for this. So I'm going to say shift plus S to stop recording. And now again, I have these styles for this here. Info. It's really simple, as I said. And if you're curious, I'm using CSS nesting, which is available in every browser. All right, cool. So if I save this, we can see here is our tips. So that looks really great. So let's actually implement the shortcuts right now because it's really simple. So we can just go here and the only thing you have to do if you want to use an event listener on the window, you can use Svelte window. And that's basically it. So now we can say on E down and now we can handle E down. Cool. So this is just another function that I have to type here, handle E down. And now we can just pass it the event, which is going to be a keyboard event. And cool. And now I don't know about you. I like using switch statements. So I'm going to say event key. And then we can have two cases. We can say R. So this is going to be when you press shift R because it's capital R, right? And then let's just go here. I'm going to break. And then we're going to have another one where it's going to be case S. And then we're also going to break this. And this is why it's really awesome to have state like this because, for example, we can have a case Q where it would be quit and then you can put this entire thing into a cancel state so you can do other things, right? But for right now, I'm not going to do anything fancy. And again, where the state comes in, this only should work when the state is ready and no other scenario. So I can say if state is ready, only then we can invoke prepare recording. And in this case, we can just say if state isn't ready, then we want to stop the recording. Actually, let me just stop recording. That's it. So now we can go here and we can say function stop recording. Cool, and that's it. And actually, this should be a string. All right, so let's save the file and that's it. So now if we try it out, let's just console log, for example, we can say console log. We can say in this example, prepare recording and then we can also say really just copy this over and say stop recording so we're going to see we're not going to invoke the other one because we're in the ready state so now when i go here just open the developer tools and now when i press shift r it's going to work so we're going to start the recording but if i press shift s let me just check was it shift s right you're going to see nothing is going to output. Otherwise, if we didn't have this check, we would start things on accident and that wouldn't look great, right? So if I go here, let me just fix this code. So as you can see, now we're doing what we're not supposed to do. So this is another way how explicit state can save you. But yeah, let me just remove this code and I'm going to uncomment this. And yeah, that's basically it. All right, cool. So now let's prepare the recording, which means we need to ask the user for permission. So this is going to be really the same as before, but now we're going to reassign it to stream. So now we can say await navigator media devices, and now we can say get display media. We're going to pass it the options. So video is going to be on configuration object. So we're going to pass it with height if the user passes it and frame rate. So yeah, this is a component. So that's we're doing this. So we can also say async so now that this works and i'm also going to pass the option for the audio so this is going to be true by default and remember same as before we have to say prefer current tab is going to be true and in our case we also need to say typescript ignore awesome all right but this might fail for whatever reason like if the user cancels so let's wrap everything in a try catch block cool so now we can say catch error and then let's just say console error and now i'm going to use backticks i'm going to say error and let's use template tags and that's basically it all right cool so now when we initialize this stream we want to start the timer and then we want to start the recording so here is what i have in plan so first we somehow need to block javascript from running right 
until the timer is done. Then you want to stop recording because if, for example, say start timer, and then when we say start recording, it's just going to happen at the same time. But first, we're going to create this function, which is going to be async. And how do we block things? We can just say await. So we're going to see how we're going to make this timer. It's actually very simple. All right, so here at the top, I'm going to say async function start timer. And again, let's just reassign state. So now when we start the timer, we can say it's ready countdown. All right, cool. So now the only thing we have to do is return a promise. So we can use a set interval. So we're going to go three, two, one, zero, and then we're going to resolve it. So now our code can continue execution. That's basically it. And we can say return new promise. So we get resolve on reject, but I only care about resolve. So we can do it like this. And then let's reassign this timer. This is this global timer interval, so we can clear it. And then I can just say set interval. Let's pass it a callback like this. And now we're just going to decrement the timer. That's it. So now we can say if timer is zero, we actually want to clear the interval. So we pass it the timer interval. That's basically it. And now we can press resolve. But you're going to see this warning because it expects an argument. You don't really have to do this, but let's just return the timer. This can be anything. You can return banana, done, but whatever. We're not going to use this, so it's really not important. We can just say timer. So this is going to return zero. All right, cool. And let's not forget to set one second. So every second is going to tick or decrement. So until it reaches zero, and then it's going to clear the timer. All right, cool. So let's save this. And if you remember, here we have start recording, so we can actually add this function right now. Let's say function start recording, just so we see that it works as expected. So now we can say console log start recording. So now we shouldn't see this message until those three seconds have passed. So let me just go here. And I always like to refresh things for good measure. So now we can see we're going to get asked for the permission. We're going to see allow. And I'm going to say three, two, one, zero. Start recording. And as you can see, we didn't reset the timer yet, which we're going to do later. But yeah, for right now, things work as expected. So let's actually go and implement the recording feature. Cool. So now I can just delete this. And again, this is the second part that we talked about. So now you have a stream and now we need to use the media recorder. So again, when we start the recording, we're going to say state recording. And that's basically it, right? Let's just say your recorder new media recorder so we always have a reference to it and now we can pass the stream that's it and now we're going to use one of these options so i'm going to say mime type and again you can only do webm unfortunately so we can say video webm and then we can also specify our own codec if we want so here you can actually go to these docs and you can read this it's a fun read in quotes if you want to go for this you can learn all about these codecs but it's really not important it by default uses VP8, but I'm going to use VP9 because it's apparently a lot better and it's used by every browser. So it's supported in every browser, I think. So yeah, here you can read more about this codex, but yeah, I'm going to leave that to you if you're curious about that. But yeah, let me just go here. And then to do this, you can just say codex equals VP9. And you can also do a check if this is supported and use the codec, but uh, it's already supported in every browser from my research. So Cool, and now we just need to start the recording. So you can say recorder start, same as before. All right, so I want to add a couple of event listeners. The first one is going to be recorder add event listener, same as before, data available. We get the event, boom, simple like that. So we're going to use this to add the video chunks. So we're going to say video chunks. So we're going to add the blobs, right? And this is already this array that we defined earlier. Let me see video chunks. Okay, so now we can just say dot push. And now we can pass event data. That's it. Simple as that. And then I also want to add an event when we press stop. So this is going to download the recording and reset the chunks. So we're going to say recorder, add event listener. I'm going to say stop. And now we're going to create a download recording function which is going to accept the video chunks. That's basically it. And after that, we're going to reset video chunks. Cool, so we can go above this function or wherever else you want. We can say function 
download recording is going to have a prop video chunk so we can pass this argument and it's going to be of type blob array and we're going to get to that in a minute but first i want to stop the recording so how can we do that well where we have start recording we can just go here create another function we can say stop recording and that's it so now whenever we stop the recording i immediately want to reset the state to ready and then again we need to clear the stream so we can say stream get tracks and then we can say for each track track dot stop cool and now if the recorder is present and the reason we check for a recorder because we can cancel this while the countdown is going on so this is going to run into an error if the recorder doesn't exist so you can say recorder and recorder stop and then we can always clear the interval so you can pass in the timer interval and we can reset the time so we can say timer free so that's basically it for stopping the recording and here we have a duplicate function right because we already defined it somewhere here yeah we're gonna find so we can just delete this and yeah basically that's it so now we can stop the recording and we can see what triggers this so we can say stop recording when you press shift s that is so we can stop the recording and it's also going to be stopped when this event listener happens right so when we trigger this track stop this is also going to happen so we're going to download the recording and the chunks right all right cool so now let's test this out again i'm going to refresh everything so now i'm going to use the shortcut this time i'm going to press shift r boom works as expected it's countdown shift s i'm going to cancel it awesome so if the user decides to cancel this then it's going to be great there is one thing though that i want to change so for example let me just say allow what if the user for example stops sharing then uh you're going to run into a problem right so there is this experimental ad event listener so you don't have to do something complicated like listening to the tracks right let me just really show you where is our code here so here where we define the stream there is this experimental event listener we can say stream add event listener it's really not even documented yet in TypeScript, right but actually it's inactive so whenever this gets cleared we can say stop recording so we can do the same thing so this is going to happen when this sharing option appears here and then when we press stop sharing this is going to trigger the inactive event listener and then this is just going to run stop recording so we can go to stop recording then we're going to reset the state and now because we clear all of these tracks is going to remove the banner at the top that says stop sharing right so if i save this and now i always love to refresh so shift r let's start recording the user changes their mind uh stop sharing okay nothing happens boom we reset the interval everything works expected shift r again let's press this boom if we cancel this you can see it works as expected and these are the small details that you spend most of your time on right so it's really a better user experience now everything works as expected all right friends so the last remaining part is to download the recording so let's go to our code and it's really not that intimidating so we can first create a blob so we can say new blob and then we can pass it the video chunks and then you can also tell it what type it should be so we're going to say type video webm codex vp9 cool so let's actually output this so let's see what the hell are these video chunks and let's also output blob cool so now let's make this into an object so now i'm also going to add a console log download cool so now let's go here refresh and now i'm going to start this so now wait three two one so now this is going to start recording we can press Control shift or stop sharing so now we're going to see the download is going to start so now we have here our video chunks which is an array of blobs right and now we're going to create a new blob so we're going to save this into a video file yeah so now we can see we can pass in multiple chunks which are blobs into one blob so this is going to be our final video if that makes sense but yeah let's just go here and i'm going to delete this so now when we created this single blob so now the thing that we have to do we can create a link we can assign the ref attribute of that link to be that blob and now we can click on that link so we can download that video so we can do that using javascript 
But if you want, you can make a UI around that, right? So let's see how we can do this. First, we need to create a link. So you can say document, create element. So we're going to create an A tag. So now we're going to reassign href to URL. Again, create object URL. And now we're going to pass it our blob. How beautiful is this, friends? So let's actually console log this out so you see what I'm talking about. And this is going to look familiar because we've already done this before. And now let's start recording. Wait for a countdown. Let's just stop. And now you can see here is our blob. So now basically we have to click on this and then we can download the video. So now we can say a download. And this is how we can name this. So we can say video.webm. This is really great. And now we can just say a click. Boom. Simple as that, friends. All right. So the moment of truth. If I refresh this, let me just go here. I'm just going to pretend I'm recording this. Let's wait for you to one. Now I'm ready. Boom. And now let's also record. As you can see, there are no animations for the recorder because we just wanted to get out of the way. Now we can press Control Shift S, that is. And boom. Now we can save this. Again, we have this video previously from before. Let's replace it. Boom. Let's open the video and let's see if it works. Oh, how beautiful is this, friends? Now you can do whatever you want with this video. The only downside with WebM is that not a lot of things support this. For example, if you want to upload this to Twitter, which is notorious for what video type it wants, you're not going to do that, right? So you can use FFmpeg, and this is something else that you can do. You can use FFmpeg Wasm, so you can convert this video file in your browser. And this is actually something that I already tried, but it starts to get a bit complicated because now you need an entire user interface to show the user what the progress is with the video, right? So I'm thinking this is a really neat idea for the next video where we can make a video converter. So from WebM to MP4 using FFmpeg in the browser. But yeah, friends, that's basically it. And now you can record this presentation. You can do whatever you want. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can also support me by becoming a patron. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. Peace.